Welcome. I'm Victoria Schneps, president of Schneps Media, and today we're talking with a power person, a man who leads one of the largest medical hospital institutions in our state, and that is Dr. Patrick O'Shaughnessy, who is the head of Catholic Health, CEO and president. Welcome, Dr. O'Shaughnessy. Thank you, Vicki. It's great to be with you today. Thank you. Thank you. You know, we are where we are, but other people are curious, how did we get to where we are? And I love you to share with us who influenced you growing up to become who you are? Sure. Be happy to share that. So um, I'll start with kind of who helped shape me. Uh, first and foremost, my parents and my family. I'm very blessed to come from a uh, family of uh, Irish Italian immigrants uh, and uh, who instilled in me a great work ethic and the belief that if you work hard enough, anything is possible, but also to be a good person and what you put out, you get back. Uh, and I've always uh, held that near and dear to me. So always to be kind, uh, to help people. And I think that's why naturally I gravitated to the field of medicine. I liked science. I wanted to help people, all people. And um, I went on and, uh, you know, trained here. I'm a native New Yorker, grew up on Long Island and uh, spent the first 10 years or so of my career uh, in New York City. Uh, I trained as an emergency trauma physician, uh, worked 9-11 at the World Trade Center pit for a short period of time, and then uh, kind of migrated my way back to Long Island uh, to run one of the emergency rooms in this health system. And then, you know, good fortune, luck, right place, right time, a lot of hard work, a lot of good people uh, around me um, and great teams. I'm a big believer in team-based care and building teams of excellence. Um, and I'm, I'm very fortunate. I've been with the health system now nearly 18 years in a variety of roles. Uh, and as you mentioned, Vicki, about uh, a year now in the role as president and CEO of Catholic Health. So I feel very blessed and lucky uh, to be in this position because I do feel it gives me an opportunity along with nearly uh, 17,000 amazing healthcare heroes, that's our workforce, to help shape Long Island and, and make it a better, healthier place. So was there anybody in your family that was in the medical world? Because it's not easy going to medical school. My husband was a doctor and yeah. he had a lot of years of education. And what, what triggered you to, uh, was there someone you admired in the field? Uh, you know, I'm the first generation in my family. Um, most of my family uh, were police officers and uh, other backgrounds. Uh, I just, I felt it connected well with me. I was strong in the sciences. And I wanted a career where I felt like I could help people. And I think that's why I landed in emergency medicine, because in, in so many environments, you are the source of care for people. I've worked in New York City for a, a many, many years, and even on Long Island. Uh, many times, it's the last little island of hope for people that do not have access to care. They seek care in an emergency room. And uh, so I think that's why you know, I kind of landed in, 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 in that position. Do you have a large family? When you were, were you one of how, how many children? One of four. And uh, okay. yeah, and everybody has done different things. Some people in business, uh, my sister's in social work. Uh, one brother is a musician. Uh, so, you know, I, I think everybody wound up doing different things, but everybody, uh, you know, happy and doing well. Uh, which was, a, can, which was a canvas, a canvas of many colors. Yes. And correct. I think, you know, that brings us now to your really having 17,000 employees with mm -hmm. a mission yes. and share with us now what your vision is now that you've finished your first year as the CEO and president of Catholic Health. Yeah, no, Vicki, it's great that you mentioned mission and vision, right? Because it all starts there. And as you know, uh, we are a faith-based health system. So, you know, for us, mission is centric. It means everything. It, and it really means it boils down to that um, we care for everyone uh, from all faiths, all backgrounds. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful mission to extend, you know, Christ's healing mission to all the communities and to help people and to have access to care uh, for thousands and thousands of, of Long Islanders. And perhaps, you know, most recently during the COVID um, pandemic, 
um, you know, we treated over 14,000 hospitalized COVID patients, getting them home safely and effectively, and treated another 18,000 uh, with therapeutics like monoclonal antibodies and prevented them from getting sick. So very, very uh, powerful. And, you know, our vision, uh, we actually, one of the first things I did in the role was to draft a new vision statement, but I didn't do that in the office by myself. I actually went out through the system, met with all of our executive leaders, and I said, share with me three words that you feel describes our organization. And at the conclusion of that circle, that tour drafted what became our vision forward statement, which says Catholic Health will be recognized as the premier health system on Long Island we commit to excellence in all we do by providing care that is state-of-the-art, compassionate, and patient-centered, every person, every time. Driven by innovation, rooted in our Catholic faith, and grounded in our humanity, we will transform the way healthcare is delivered to become the most trusted health partner to all communities we serve. And, and, no, and that's very ambitious. And I think, you know, without that kind of vision, it can never happen. So, that's right. you know, you have how many hospitals now are in the system? Yeah, so we're a six hospital system. We span from Eastern Queens to Eastern Long Island. So St. Francis Hospital, Murphy Hospital, St. Joseph's Hospital, Good Samaritan University Hospital, St. Catherine's Hospital and St. Charles Hospital. So from Roslyn to Port Jefferson. Well, it's a big footprint and being able to have different missions for different communities. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I loved your cash, compassionate piece of it. And I think that's part of the faith-based service that you offer. Do you think that that has a big influence on how you came to that feeling of how you must serve people? Absolutely. Uh, because you think about it, there's nothing more intimate than healthcare. Um, you know, whether it's uh, caring for someone when they're sick, um, helping bring uh, you know, families together at times of crisis, uh, helping in the community. Um, so much, Vicki, even goes beyond the four walls of the hospital, right? So making sure a lot of the things that we do in community access in terms of clinics, we have mobile state-of-the-art buses that can get out and do health screenings. Uh, and, and then we're involved in a variety of ways to giving back to the communities, whether that's around food insecurity, help supporting um, good access to care, looking to uh, reduce uh, impacts, negative impacts from social determinants of health, which drives so much of chronic disease. So there's a lot that we do, but you can't do that. You know, we're in the business of caring. And if you're not compassionate, it's one of the first things I look for in employees and our team members. Are you compassionate? Do you have empathy as well? Can you really put yourself in the patient's shoes? And do you care to, to make a difference in their lives? Uh, that's very important. So, you know, one of our media, we have Dan's Papers and the Long Island Press on Long Island, but we also have Noticia, our Spanish language paper. And I've seen the list, most recent census showing the tremendous growth of the Hispanic communities and potentially being larger than the Caucasian communities. Yes. How have you been set up to serve? Because you have many hospitals that are in those areas of high density of the Spanish communities. How are you coping with that? Oh, it's, you know, so first of all, one of the things I love about Long Island is it's just a melting pot of people from all backgrounds, all religions, races, and uh, our Hispanic communities uh, are very engaged uh, with Catholic health. Uh, so of our Af African American communities, uh, our Asian American communities, and, you know, when you look at each hospital, there's some areas of uh, surrounding market segments uh, where our services are very impactful. Uh, so as an example, you mentioned uh, the Hispanic community on Long Island. Well, Mercy Medical Center, uh, Good Samaritan Medical Center, and West Islip both have a variety of programs, impacts, uh, ways in which we connect in. And we're really trying to, uh, is to make sure that in, in all of the ways that we communicate with our patient population, uh, we do so in their language and respect and support their culture, right? So um, many of our publications uh, or drafted a multilingual uh, to try to connect in and educate and to let folks know where they can go for care uh, and how to make it easier. And, I, and that's what I said, you know, we want to provide the right care in the right place at the right time by the right people. And many times that means bringing resources to a community, but you don't, you know, if you don't know what they're like, you have to ask. So we get involved in a lot of different community 
uh, resources. We, we conduct uh, community health needs assessments uh, of our entire uh, market. Uh, so we get a sense of what's missing, what's lacking, and how do we make an impact? Well, you know, I think that uh, that being sensitive to the communities is what's making Catholic Health a leader on the island. And, you know, I think, you know, we, we can easily say that you have had great success. What what ideas would you share with us for people who want to be successful to help them do what you have done, be sure. successful? Uh, a variety of things. Uh, number one, um, you have to really have um, relentless, I call it, you know, um, relentless passion to pursue your dream. Everybody has gifts. Every human being has gifts they could give back uh, to the world or at least their little corner of the world. So, you know, know what, it, know what yours is, cultivate it, grow it, and then um, be relentless in pursuing it. Uh, don't let folks tell you you can't do it, you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you don't come from the right background. Blast through all of the barriers. And, and, and I think having that kind of commitment um, in a positive way, I think goes a long way to helping people achieve their dreams. And, and I think um, all, always save time too, to be creative uh, and to learn. I'm a lot, lifelong student, Vicki. I am always learning. Even now, I feel so blessed to be doing what I'm doing. But I have a network of healthcare CEOs from other areas of the country that I connect in with. These are women and men that have been doing this job 10 years more than me. I'm very, very modest and I look to learn from them. Uh, so, you know, you have to continually uh, be a lifelong learner. And then at the end of the day, you know, I always believe in giving something back, you know, whatever it is, you know, whatever you achieve in life, whatever you're doing, and that doesn't necessarily mean monetarily uh, contributing, although if that's what you can do, then you do it. But giving back of your time, giving something back uh, to make your community a little bit better of a place. I think if more people did that, we'd be far better along uh, as a society than, 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 we've, than we've been. Well, I think you're so wise. I always feel the more I give, the more I get. Yes. And nothing feels better than giving because it is just, um, it, it warms the heart and it makes the soul who we are. And I wanted to ask you, you know, uh, we heard you are the CEO in your lineage, lineage to the top. But share with us something that nobody might know about you that mm -hmm. we could have a little tidbit. Sure. Uh, well, uh, one of the things I enjoy doing when I'm not working, although I work quite a bit, I, I am uh, a licensed pilot. I fly. I'm a passionate aviator. Uh, Long Island is a beautiful place to, uh, to fly. And um, I also, you know, I'm trying now to use some of that to give uh, discovery flights uh, to, to kids uh, to maybe get them out of uh, an environment that maybe they should not be in and to give them uh, uh, a different perspective on things. Uh, and again, it doesn't mean that all of them are going to want to pursue flight, but they could use it as a vehicle. And, you know, you have to train for something and to make yourself better and to improve. Um, so again, I think, you know, we all have to have things that we balance in life and, and some people um, uh, enjoy music or they play golf or they do other things. Um, uh, so that's one of the things that I uh, am very passionate about and I enjoy doing uh, as, a, as a means for, uh, for downtime. So what is your favorite spot that you've flown to in the last year or two? Um, I, I like going out to, um, the Martha's Vineyard or Nantucket, uh, they're beautiful little islands. You, you don't realize when you get up, you know, and I always say this to people, you know, you, you get a whole new perspective of Long Island when you look at it from above. Um, mm -hmm. and just uh, this weekend, I, I went out to Block Island uh, and flew out there. Uh, and as you get up uh, and look down, you, you get to see we're kind of all in it together. And it's really, um, it's not that big of an island. It's, it's pretty narrow. Uh, and, and we're all kind of living in the same place and, uh, uh, it gives you a different perspective on things. And when, when you get out over the water, um, you'd be amazed at how, how beautiful, uh, it really is. You don't really get to appreciate it when you're terrestrially, you know, living, but when you go up uh, and you can see it and you see the colors of the blues, it almost looks like the Caribbean, uh, but you just don't appreciate it because you don't get to see it. Well, um, you know, I think that, uh, 
giving, uh, I was on a, the bicycle uh, marathon and they did it last, yesterday in the bicycle marathon. You also on a bike get to see a city in a whole different perspective. But when you're in the sky, when is your birthday? What month are you? November. November. Okay. I didn't know if you were Pisces like I am, you know, we, we love the water so much, but I think that having that view of the, of the world, you know, it's a remarkable thing looking down on our earth and seeing how spectacular and how precious it is, but you are precious for the people every day up right there on the ground. You work in the ground of within the weeds of making sure our hospital care is of the best quality. So thank you, Dr. Patrick O'Shaughnessy, who is the CEO and president of Catholic Health. Delighted to have a moment to be able to share with you and our listeners and our viewers what wonderful vision you have for our island's health care. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Vicki. It was wonderful to be with you.